Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and welcome to another city update. But hang on, this doesn't look like another beach update. These are Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So yes, apologies to those who are expecting another update to the beach area of Brick Nottingham. That will have to wait because unfortunately I got too excited by getting the final pieces for my underground turtle lair that will be based in a sewer that I just, well, I just have to drop everything and get on with that instead. So uh, let's go up to the Lego room and have a look at the challenge ahead. So, so far underground, all I've done is my subway station, which many of you will be familiar with. And the obvious place to do a turtle lair is in this sort of area here, which I'm currently using to store my train IR controllers, sort of in between the beach and our new fish and chip shop uh, and that subway. And I am going to use that for scenes like this, underground scenes and caves and goodness knows what, but I'm not going to put the turtles there. And that's for a reason I'm not going to share with you just yet, but there is a very good reason for that. Uh, but I am going to use a very similar area over here, this vertical wall basically, which is kind of near the Blue Bridge and the harbour and the cliffs with the sea monster in and so on. And I'm going to basically bash a hole in this wall and use a large amount of it for building my turtle lair. Now, as you've probably can tell already, this isn't a huge space to work with uh, underneath this base plate. The uh, edge of the table comes up to about here. So I've only got about sort of 10, 12 uh, studs depth. I've got quite a bit of width to work with, being pretty much about 32. I don't think I'll use all of that. So probably 16 to 24 studs in width. But the height is the real problem. You can see there, these are five tall bricks and there's an inverted slope layer just above them. So I've actually got six bricks of height to work with and not an ounce more. So um, yeah, it's going to be quite constrained and quite hard to see into because you kind of have to kind of dip your head to have a look at it. But I think it'll look good as sort of a cutaway, kind of like we did on the subway station. So you'll kind of be seeing through some walls or whatever to uh, see inside. Uh, but I think that'll look rather good still. So to start, I think I'm going to have to take out some of these wall pieces and uh, take them down to the building desk with me and then start planning uh, what to do. Right, now to planning. So I've got the pieces that I think I need from the upstairs area with some of the inverted slopes and the uh, one by two by five column pieces. So uh, that's good. I also want to incorporate four P's in this. The first of those P's is for panels. And these are the panels that I've collected so far for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. These three are from the uh, Turtle Lair Attack set, uh, 79103. That's from 2013. And they're all quite good. This one's got a sort of tunnel entrance, so that might be the entrance to the lair. I'm thinking the wood is kind of in perspective, as in a bit further back, so you can still sort of get around the corner. And as a result, it's quite good that it's on the back wall of the inside of this panel piece rather than sort of stuck on the front like the other ones are. So I kind of like that. So that's good. We've got the Mutants Rule uh, graffiti, which is very nice and bright. And then we've got the sort of board where they're planning all their fantastic vehicles like the blimp and uh, big truck thing. So they're all very good. And then from another set, which was a junior set from a year later in 2014, I've got this. That was the uh, also Turtle Lair set. 10669 and um, this piece is in olive green but I do think it will go well in this scene and it's kind of got the end of a pipe uh, into which they've built this sort of computer screen which has got a few sort of files on bad guys presumably and um, some 
hot spots being lit up on a map and a bit of purple graffiti, which is always welcome. So I really like that as well. So I'm gonna try and incorporate all of those four panels into the uh, scene. Uh, the other thing I want to put into the scene is some perspective. So because we're working in such a small uh, area to do all this in, I think we kind of got to draw in the eye. So I think we need to put in some kind of fake perspective and have some very angled walls going in and then a flat back. So it kind of looks uh, a bit deceptive to the eye, but sort of brings you in and makes it look maybe a bit bigger than it is. So with that in mind, I thought I'd get these panels and pretty much have them built in something like this sort of perspective. And it kind of looks like you're seeing the side walls at the same time as you're seeing the back wall and it makes it a little more compact, but also just as interesting. So that's my second P that I'm going to try and incorporate into this build. The third P is pipes. So I've got some interesting pipes, just some nice bright red to sort of break up all of this gray and some very bright yellow. And this is the sort of octagonal pipe pieces, which are very interesting. They were in a few um, aqua sets and a few space sets, I think, uh, a while back now. Uh, but they're really interesting. I just bought a few to play around with, and this is the uh, perfect opportunity to play around with them properly. So that's good. So pipes is my third P. And then my fourth P, yep, it's pizza. We need pizza because we've got turtles, and everyone knows that turtles like pizza. Good. Right, so what I'm going to do is just get some... Um, spare plates to make a sort of temporary base plate for building this down here because building it in situ in that um, sort of very compact and small area in between a base plate and uh, a table is going to be an absolute nightmare. So I figure if I build it here and I make sure I keep within those tight, tight building constraints of six bricks high and roughly 20 bricks in width and about 12 studs depth, then I should be all right. Okay, so these are the plates that I'm going to be working on temporarily. And you can see I've just tiled a, an area in the middle that's roughly the right depth and just a sort of middle focus point for us. And I figured I'd have all of the turtles sitting down to enjoy a nice meal of pizza. So with that in mind, I put in two chairs uh, right at the front because if we put everything even one or two studs in, we're just not going to be able to see it. So I think we have to have that right at the front and then the next two chairs at an angle so it looks like they're gathered around uh, as near as possible. So only one stud further uh, gap in between them. Uh, and the chairs are, well, a bit elongated in a kind of odd way because turtles all have a shell. So if you put a turtle on a normal chair, he won't fit but he's got plenty of room on one of these chairs. So it's a turtle friendly chair. So that's good. Uh, and then I thought they could all be gathered around a table, but why have a normal table, a nice table with a tablecloth when these are four teenagers after all, and they're also turtles. So they wouldn't mind using an upside down dustbin or trash can, depending on your part of the world. And I thought that was quite clever. It's just, um, one of those round tiles, doesn't need to have the hole in it, of course, uh, but then you can just sort of clip the bin on as if it were a lid, but upside down. And obviously I won't be able to fit anything onto the uh, anti-studs here, pizza-wise, but uh, I think it looks good being a dustbin, a bit different and interesting. So that's good. Right, then uh, for the panels. Now the first panel is actually six bricks high already. So wherever I put that, and I'm thinking here, I can't mount it even one plate higher so we can see the bottom of that uh, graffiti or anything like that. It literally has to be on the ground floor and even with absolutely nothing uh, on top of it at all. So yeah, pretty much stuck there. And I thought I really liked the mutants rule uh, mural there. So I thought um, I would have that next to it. And for that, it's five tall. So 
even then I can't put a brick above or below it if I want it to be secure. So I've actually put two plates underneath and one plate on top. And that's just so it's uh, basically when it's covered by the tiles, it's kind of got one above and one below. So it's very central. And I've just added these profile bricks just to fill in the gap uh, in the corner. And then these two, I can kind of have, as we said before, uh, kind of at an angle like that. Now, the way I'm going to do that is put them on uh, angle bricks or angle plates and kind of have them above the tile layer, but probably with much like this one's got three plates, one above and two below. It'll have to have one above and one below because uh, the third uh, plate depth will be taken up by the tiles that they'll be sat on. And it will kind of be like that. So I'm thinking already that looks pretty good. So I'm going to continue with that and I'm probably going to get my pipes incorporated somewhere. Maybe a red one on one side and a yellow one on the other or something like that. Uh, that's going to need a bit more fiddling with. Uh, and I think it will start to really come together. Great. Right, so we've got our back wall. We've got our side walls planned. So we kind of need to think about the front wall. And obviously this needs to fit in with the um, wall that's already there. That's kind of basically like that on each side. If I just move them a bit further apart. Uh, so basically I want a cutout and I kind of want it to look like a cutout as well. So it doesn't have to look sort of realistic. So what I did was I built this, which is kind of almost like a round window into the sewer because it kind of, represents uh, us looking kind of with x-ray vision through a wall to see what's going on. It's not really the uh, a sort of pipe or anything like that because they'd be hanging <laughs> right on the edge of a cliff into the bay. But, um, you know, you get the idea. And then these bits can be sort of built right into the continuing wall like that. In fact, I might as well get these two as well because I'm alternating between... Uh, one of those showing and then a normal blank one and then a striped one a blank one striped one blank one just to give it a nice textured pattern so if I do that then that's how it's going to look from the outside and we'll be sort of bending down and peering into that hole and already it's looking very colorful and fun if you ask me I think that's looking really good great so I'm probably going to take off that front wall now, given that I've got it kind of planned. Uh, and then we can put it back uh, when we finish building. But I know it just takes up this strip at the front. Uh, and another thing I want to do is just to make it look a bit more sewer-like and sort of a bit grotty, is add uh, a couple of these trans clear light blue tiles just to sort of suggest that maybe these pipes are kind of leaking and um, water or God knows what else is actually sort of spilling out of this pipe into the dripping dank layer. Okay, so I've done the pipe leak with the water on the floor and I think it's looking pretty good and realistic. It has got a bit of uh, right angled corners of course, but you can't always avoid that in Lego. I think it's good enough for the amount we're going to be able to see it. So that's great. Got the red pipe in here with a nice little meter. And for the yellow one, I've added a blue stripe with a uh, two by two round plate. And I thought I'd add these small steering wheel pieces to each of these and actually have this sort of ugly connection area as a sort of feature rather than a uh, ugly bit. And I sort of put that there. Obviously, I'm having to bunch everything up very much. So to see everything inside, you're really going to have to sort of peer at it. But I'm happy with that. Uh, and then that will be behind this sort of beginning of the curve. Then for the side walls next. So normally the wall would look like that. So if I'm going to build a side wall into the front wall for structural integrity, then I'm either going to have to incorporate that into it or have it so it's got a sort of plain two wide front here. And that's what I've decided to do so I can get rid of that and replace it with this column, which looks the same from the outside, but it's actually built up 
of things like a hinge brick and has a hinge plate in it and so on and a few more um, profile bricks just to give it a bit more interest you'll barely be able to see these because they'll be right around the corner and then our panel one plate five bricks one plate and the tile layer and that means that that can be put down there look exactly the same from outside you know when we put this back and so on you won't even be able to tell that it's being used uh, and then you've got that angled wall and it kind of overlaps at the moment maybe I'll have to adjust that slightly but um, you can see that it's it's getting that perspective that we were looking for and the tile layer counts as that last plate depth to take us up to the full six bricks so we're at full height so I'm liking that I think the most easy solution would be just to move everything along one there we go that's looking good isn't it and then I probably need to put something just behind this any old spare brick just to stop that sort of flapping open too far but I like that I'm going to do the other side over here uh, and then we should be mm, almost ready to enclose it I think so there's the other side done as well with the uh, entrance in with the caution sign and this time I've actually added a modified brick with clip and that's so I can add another feature that is very prominent with the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles which is a skateboard and I thought I'd get a really bright one I might want that for my uh, skateboard store which is something I've got planned at some point in the long distant future um, so I may swap that out for a different one uh, in the future but it's uh, a good one for now right so it's looking pretty good we've got lots of stickers lots of color brightness orange red yellow blue pretty good but I think there's one thing missing and that's you can't eat pizza with your hands full of very vicious weapons so I've made a little weapon rack now this is gonna be quite hard to show you because it's black but it's just loads of modified bricks with clips in between a 1x8 plate at the bottom and a 1x8 tile at the top with a couple of feet made out of jumper plates and I figured if I get everyone's weapons and sit them down for dinner maybe give him a can of my rocket fuel drink that's going around my city and then I can add the uh, swords to or katana 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 I don't know have you pronounced that then we've got Donatello put him on his seat and I'm leaning back so we can still see in and his bow staff And Raphael's whatever they're called stabby things <laughs> I'm gonna get so many comments about what they are <laughs> one comment is enough people and I'm gonna have him standing up uh, and coming into the scene so one of the chairs being vacant because somebody has got to have gone out and got the pizzas so if I give him two pizzas, I've deliberately gone for these sort of older style pizzas rather than the newer ones because the newer ones are on sort of tan uh, tiles and so on. And I figure that these ones on these bright yellow uh, tiles look a lot brighter. So let's have him walking in from the entrance. <laughs> that looks fun, doesn't it? And then... Michelangelo uh, 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 and his nunchucks so I can have one on that one and one on that one so there we've got a very interesting looking weapon rack and I've planned ahead and made some plates in the floor to take the jumper plates so it's all connected and there we go and it's not obscuring too much our uh, screen over here or our graffiti over here now that I think you'll agree is a very packed and stacked scene so I'm very happy with that 
So we just need to put on the kind of front arch like that. And then this will be more of the wall sort of being held together. And then we'll have, when we're up in the Lego room, a kind of base plate lid on the whole thing. Just to add a little more detail, I thought I'd uh, add some bits to these one by one modified bricks. I've just put on one of those sort of tube exhaust pipe type things. And I put a grill on the other one. Just gives it a bit more detail. And there we have it. There's our scene. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles at dinner. Great. Now thinking about this a little bit more, I realize I've hit a bit of a stumbling block because this is gonna be ridiculously dark. Uh, if I sort of block the back window, that's probably gonna let in light from where we are and put on a sort of makeshift roof, you can see that that, well, you can see the front two turtles and that is it. You can't even tell that, well, you can't see Raphael at all. So that is no good at all. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is something that I hadn't planned to do a lot in my city, which is add some lighting. Uh, I'm not going to <laughs> start the relentless pursuit of lighting my entire city. Uh, it's not that I'm anti-lighting. It's just that if I start lighting every single scene I do and every modular and all the rest of it, I mean, it looks great, but I'm just never going to fill my room with Lego. <laughs> and I really need to get on with it in my mind and make even more progress. And I think a lot of you would agree with that. So I can always light it in the long distant future once it's more complete. But uh, for now, I'm going to keep lighting to a minimum. But this scene definitely needs it because it's dark. Uh, so what I'm planning to do is use some Power Functions lights. Just one set of two lights because they come as a sort of pair, you know, to light a train or something like that, a train's headlights. And I'm hoping to, because they come on separate wires, kind of have one poking in from each corner, one on each side, and try and light this scene. Uh, and then I had a bit of a brainwave, and I thought that that could actually even link up with the battery pack that is currently powering the Vestas wind turbine, because it's only kind of, I don't know, about here. So I think it'll even reach without an extension uh, cord, um, let alone uh, directly. So, um, yeah, so I'm hoping that that will, A, fix the problem, just one pair of lights, and B, it will reach to that power source. It does mean that it'll only be lit up when the Vestas wind turbine is on. Uh, but that makes sense because I don't want to like have another switch to turn just this on and off individually. I don't want to use another battery box individually. Uh, and it's kind of a funny thing if you think about it. I mean, Mrs. Hood was saying, well, it's almost like they're uh, tapping into uh, the energy source illegally. <laughs> and I thought that was quite funny. It's kind of the sort of thing that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles would do is, um, you know, link up to a existing power source just to power their lair. So I like that even more now. So I'm going to um, see what I can do with a set of lights down here before we worry about incorporating it all upstairs. Right, so as I said, I've added one pair of Power Functions lights. That's part 8870, quite cheap. It's about sort of three pounds or three pound 50. Fortunately, I had one spare. Aim for a train, I think, but uh, I'll have to replace that and buy another. Might buy more than one. You never know when they might come in useful. So what I've done is wired one of those up to each side wall. So you can see one is going into here and the other here. And they're just poking through a one by two Technic brick. You can probably just see on each side up there. And that's just a direct replacement for one of those profile bricks I had on each side. So that was very easy fix to do. Uh, and then they just link up to the battery box behind. So we should be able to test this very easily down here. So I'm going to put my hand there to sort of block that window, any light going in there. And I'm going to put on my very uh, ramshackle roof just so we can see what effect it has. Uh, and hopefully you can see in. Okay. Well, 
it actually works quite well. I'm not sure if it's showing up that well given the bright lighting of my camera lights, but that does actually look quite good. Uh, let me see if I can show you it without the camera lights. Here we go. There you are. So how does that scene look? I mean, you can definitely see it all, can't you? I think that's enough. I mean, it still looks sort of dark and dank and a bit nasty in there, but that's kind of the point, isn't it? Almost can hear the dripping of the uh, water hitting those puddles on the floor. Anyway, it wasn't going to work with it off. Let me show you with it off. Yeah, it's just far too dark, isn't it? So, um, yeah. I think we're going to have the light and have it linked up to the Vestas wind turbine. Let's get this up to the Lego room. Right, so we're upstairs in the Lego room on shaky handheld. There's our scene. And I've just got to get it in there. <laughs> yeah, transferring it all bit by bit. So it's going to take a while and be a bit thankless, but uh, nonetheless, I think it will be worth it. And then we can try and plug that power cable into what is down here, uh, the switch for the Vestas wind turbine. And while we're here, I just thought I'd share a minor bit of progress. I've actually added one more bit of monorail, just an eight long piece here. So we've got a slightly longer straight before we hit the switch, because when we did the uh, tour of the whole city, the tram was coming down and being a bit faster than it normally is coming downhill and it would kind of skip through the switch and that was what was making it stop periodically. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it wouldn't and this just means that it's going to be flatter for longer and thus be at a more normal speed when it hits the switch and therefore it should bounce back every time and on the testing I've done so far uh, that does work so that's really good and it just means that um, the tram line comes right up to the edge of the cliff but actually I think that looks really good as well so uh, I don't mind that change at all. Great! So there it is transferred into position. You can see the supports on this side and then the light in the wall going behind there and the other light all going under all this wiring to the battery box, which is kind of hidden here and built into the wall with the switch there. So if I pull that out, you can hear and see the wind turbine going and our lights on. So it looks like the turtles have successfully tapped into the power grid, naughty devils. Okay, so that's all in place and put back together again with the base plate on top and so on. So the moment of truth, let's turn on the lights. Hey, hey, there we go. I think that's looking really good. Clearly the turtles have successfully patched into the uh, electric grid of the city. And we can see all four turtles quite clearly. We can see the pizza, the skateboard, the upside down dustbin table, all the pipes. And that uh, panel at the back with mutants rule written on it almost seems to glow in the dark. It looks fantastic. So I really like that. I think that's been a good success. I mean, it's clearly very dark in there still, but I mean, it's a sewer. What would you expect? So uh, yeah, I think I'm really happy with that. But do tell me what you think. On to shaky handheld. And there's our scene in the wall, kind of unbroken from the cliffs and our new flat area. And what I'm going to build here is the reason why I've chosen here rather than near the full subway station, because it's gonna have something that the turtles are going to be interacting with. But um, I think when we look on a broader angle, 
sort of fits in very well, this sort of cutaway into the side of that seawall and the underside of the city. It's mildly annoying we need to have the Vesta's wind turbine going to make it uh, lit, but I think that at least comes with a sort of funny side story that they tapped in uh, illegally. And incidentally, now I've uh, added that extra piece of uh, tram monorail line, it actually gives a lot more space in front of this station where the clumsy guy is falling down these stairs. And it does mean that I could actually extend my park a little bit because it is a bit congested. I could probably make it another, I don't know, two or four studs deep at least. So that's worth thinking about. And also worth thinking about is uh, the fact that this area here is hollow. So I could actually put one of my uh, subway stairs, kind of like this one, into that spot as well. And then there'd be a sort of interaction between the turtles down here and the subway sort of here so um that could work as well uh, it's quite near in a sense to the one on old market square over there uh, but it's a fair distance for a, a minifigure to walk so it wouldn't be too bad i do have quite a few more subway stops planned so why not so yeah looking good and before I forget, better do the vehicle of the day. And this is from set 60151. And it is the Dragster Transporter. And that's obviously the lorry cab. Now the uh, trailer for that set is far too big and has been abandoned. The Dragster itself is already on the roads of Brick Nottingham, burning up the street. But the cab itself is really good looking, I think with this dark blue and these flamish yellowish orange stripes and white stripes as well. So that needs to be on our streets as well. And it's often you see the cab without its trailer when it's in the middle of jobs or something like that. Yeah, let's turn this off. Okay, night night turtles. Oh, peace. So I do hope you've enjoyed that build as much as I have. It was really good fun to do and quite challenging in places because of the uh, massive constraints on space and actually getting it into location uh, in this very hard to access and weird area in between two tables. But I think the outcome is well worth it. And uh, in doing so, we've extended the monorail tram line as well. And uh, yeah, it's all progress in the right direction. Very good. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be going back to our main station build for part three. See you then.